Welcome to the Believers in Business Hour on KVCE AM 1160. It's time for Bar Talk with local trial lawyer Brad Parker, the attorney you want but hope you never need. Stay tuned, get informed, and get educated about your legal rights when you or a loved one have been seriously injured or harmed by the conduct of someone else or at the hands of an insurance company. Brad Parker has focused his law practice exclusively on trial work since becoming licensed in 1985 and is board certified in personal injury trial law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. And now, here's Bar Talk with Brad Parker, the attorney you want but hope you never need. Good evening. Welcome to Bar Talk. I'm Brad Parker. I'm glad you could tune in this afternoon and catch up with me. Uh, if you've got any legal issues or questions that you want answered or like to run by me, I encourage you, by all means, call into the studio and give me your give me your question. That number here is 214-787-1160. And I know many of you may be on the road, and if you're being safe, you may not be talking while you're driving and uh, so save your question. We can do it again. Uh, you can call me at my office. My office number is 503-9200. That's 817-503-9200. Or you could always email me at brad at parkerlawfirm.com. That's brad, B-R-A-D, at parkerlawfirm.com. Uh, be happy to always talk to you, free consultation, visit with you over the phone. If we need to get you into the office, we certainly will. And, you know, even if it's not about a personal injury matter, uh, if you got a criminal issue or a marriage uh, dissolution, divorce, adoption, I had some uh, buddy, uh, a dear friend, uh, contact me over the weekend and wanting to know about wills. Uh, I don't do wills, but I can certainly set you up with someone who can. And so if I can't help you, uh, my goal is to always get you to somebody that can make sure they can take care of you. Uh, a lot of been going on uh, over the week. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, I guess, uh, one of my favorite vacation spots uh, ever uh, is Cabo San Lucas. And uh, if you've been watching the news, boy, they had just got plastered by a hurricane. Uh, fortunately, or at least the last news segment that I saw, I don't think there were any deaths. But there has been extreme destruction down there between um, uh, Cabo and uh, Cabo de Jose, uh, or is it Jose de Cabo? Any event down there, the whole airport is is closed. They were having to evacuate people on military jets. The tourists, I saw there were like thirty thousand tourists in that area at the time the storm hit. Twenty six thousand of whom are foreigners. So I guess I mean four thousand uh, local tourists, but. Uh, Wow, can you imagine just the madness that must be going on down there? Telephone poles knocked down, water uh, plants offline, electricity down, uh, cell phone towers uh, knocked down. Uh, just can't imagine going down there for a little vacation and then having that, that nightmare. And not to mention the poor people that live down there, uh, their homes destroyed, uh, lives disrupted. So uh, uh, keep, keep those folks in your mind, and if you can help them out somehow, Please do. It's beautiful down in Cabo. If you've never been there, uh, hopefully you'll get down there when they get things rebuilt. Um, you know, we uh, always try to hit on uh, topical issues and different things that are going on. And I was watching a TV, or I saw not TV, but uh, a YouTube commercial. And uh, <clears throat> while this show isn't about politics, it brought up uh, uh, an issue. I saw a Wendy Davis commercial that brought up an issue that we were talking about just a couple of weeks ago with my good friend Jim Gerards. You might recall uh, Jim was in the studio. He's a medical malpractice attorney here in Dallas, uh, one of the few guys that still does that that work, one of the few lawyers that still will even handle a medical malpractice case because of all the uh, tort reform measures that have been instituted over the years since 2003, really since about 2000. Uh, there were Supreme Court cases, the legislative uh, rollbacks just make those cases almost impossible to pursue. But you might recall that uh, when Jim was in studio, uh, we talked about that case up in uh, Plano with the Baylor Plano Hospital where uh, Dr. Dunst uh, was a orthopedic spine surgeon who had operated on a numerous people up there. And the allegations are that he was a cokehead. Uh, he was doing cocaine, um, prescription drugs, alcohol, uh, just running wild. And uh, 
had actually killed uh, or a few patients of his, a couple of patients, I believe, had died as a result of his blunders in the operating room, uh, cutting arteries, not repairing them. Uh, one doctor uh, assisted him in a surgery and went to management at Baylor Hospital complaining like the guy didn't know what he was doing, that he was a, basically a butcher and didn't even know basic human anatomy uh, by his conduct. And this was allowed to go on for, for some time. And um, uh, ultimately, uh, Baylor got rid of him. But even after they got rid of him, uh, they wrote him a letter of recommendation. Uh, but, or I shouldn't say recommendation may be too strong, but uh, a letter indicating that he was in good standing with Baylor, and uh, uh, which was just to the direct opposite. Uh, one of the things he did, he operated on somebody that was his roommate that turns out to maybe be his drug dealer uh, and actually paralyzed him. Uh, but anyway, Baylor knew or clearly should have known that this doctor was out of absolute control and did nothing about it. And then, like I said, when he left, he left with a letter indicating that, hey, all's good here. Well, Jim went in, you know, Jim Gerards was one of the attorneys on that deal. Anyway, uh, one of the aspects, the more interesting aspects that Jim and I talked about was, well, why did the attorney general, who Greg Abbott, uh, get involved in that suit? And uh, because after Jim filed the lawsuit against Baylor uh, and some another, another attorney filed that lawsuit against Baylor, the attorney general got involved because they were attacking the constitutionality of one of the tort reform measures and uh it just really no no reason for the attorney general to get involved uh, his excuse has been that uh he wanted to preserve there was an attack on one of those texas state statutes and the constitutionally thereof or constitutionality thereof that's why he got involved but as we talked about in the show uh, there's literally uh hundreds or i should say maybe tens if not hundreds of uh, lawsuits that involve the constitutionality of some provision of Texas law that the attorney general never gets involved in. And this one is very curious. And of course, uh, what the commercial of uh, Wendy Davis, and why I'm even bringing this back up, points out and what we pointed out on our show, 25 or 250, I'm sorry, $250,000 uh, contribution had been made to Greg Abbott's campaign uh, just a few weeks before he decided to get involved in this. And that contribution came from um, McLean a, uh, 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 on the board of, uh, of uh, regents or the uh, board of directors, I'm sorry, Drayton McLean, chairman of the network of hospitals uh, that gave this contribution, uh, chairman of the network of hospitals, including Baylor Medical Center in Plano. So uh, any event, for what it's worth, it's just a little follow-up to uh, the show uh, or the issues that we discussed in the previous show. Uh, it's kind of interesting to watch. Uh, that lawsuit's a long way from being over. It'll be interesting to see where the constitutionality argument goes and uh, what ultimately happens. That, that case is, of course, pending in Dallas uh, in federal district court. One other update that I wanted to provide to you was that about uh, Tony Stewart. You may recall that Tony Stewart is the race car driver who uh, up in uh, New York was racing. Uh, uh, a young man, brand new driver uh, by the name of Ward was racing and Tony Stewart uh, in, intentionally or unintentionally hit his car, caused Ward to hit the wall and, and spin out. Ward got out of his car and went down and uh, was pointing at Tony Stewart. A couple of other of the racers came around, avoided him, but Tony Stewart unfortunately ran into Kevin Ward and killed him. Uh, the question, of course, that we were talking about was, what uh, what's the civil, civil ramification to that? And we, we talked at length about that. Uh, the new development in that case is that the uh, investigation has concluded uh, the investigation has been turned over to the district attorney's office in uh, Ontario County, <clears throat> uh, and the district attorney has decided to present that to a grand jury for further consideration. And so that'll be an interesting matter to continue to watch. As far as I could determine, the parents had not yet filed suit against Tony Stewart. Uh, that may be problematic up in up in the New York area. 
you know, wrongful death suits in Texas can recover what we call loss of consortium, a loss of uh, enjoyment in life. In New York, it's limited to economic damages. So uh, now that could be a very difficult case to have up there. But anyway, that's a couple of uh, updates. I want to do one more update, but we're going to talk about Aurora, Colorado later. Uh, come back and listen to it. Uh, you'll be, be interested in knowing what's going on with guns and ammunition and the right to buy them overline. This is Brad Parker, Bar Talk. This is 1160 AM, KVCE, Dallas Fort Worth's business authority. Hey, golf fans, this is Tom Keyes, co host of the Golf Grape and Grub Show, inviting you to join Pam Wood and myself as we expand the exploration of golf to food and wine. With the 19th hole in mind, we will talk with chefs, winemakers, and all things fun. We will feature behind the scenes interviews with caddies, announcers, instructors, fitness folks, course designers, club makers, fashion makers, and more. So join us every Saturday, noon to 1 p.m. on 1160 AM. You can also catch us online at KVCE. Radio.com. The Golf Grape and Grub Show, Saturday, noon to 1 p.m. on KVC. To earn your MBA at DeVry University's Keller Graduate School of Management, Keller professors share real-world experience so students graduate ready to advance in their careers. Get started with our Merit-Based Career Catalyst Scholarship with up to $8,000 for new students who qualify. Classes start October 27th. Full details at keller.edu slash scholarships. For students who qualify and start by November 2014, subject to approval and availability of funds, DeVry University is authorized for operation by the THEC, certified to operate by CHEV. In New York, DeVry University operates the DeVry College of New York. Heartburn sufferers can now eat at the corner of look spicy, and I'm going in. That's because Walgreens makes it easy with new Nexium 24-hour. Now the number one prescribed acid-blocking brand is available without a prescription for frequent heartburn. So swing by Walgreens. You'll be in and out with the protection you need to spice things up. Walgreens, at the corner of happy and healthy. May take one to four days for full effect use as directed to treat frequent heartburn, not for immediate relief. Boss Academy Radio wants to give back to its listeners. For the first time in 10 years, Tony Robbins is coming back to Dallas to help you unleash the power within. Are you going to give up or move forward? Are you going to blame somebody or are you going to change something? Whatever you do is going to shape your destiny. Turn fear into power and transform everything from finances to your relationships to your health. This isn't hyper motivation, but a life-changing event hosted by a man who has helped transform and influence the lives of more than 8 million people worldwide. When registering to attend this powerful, life-changing four-day seminar, get your special Boss Academy discount. All you have to do is dial 858-535-6220 and tell them Boss Academy sent you. Unleash the power within, where the impossible becomes possible with Tony Robbins' October 23rd through the 26th at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center, 650 South Griffin Street in Dallas. Visit kvceradio.com or call today and mention Boss Academy, 858-535-6220. That's 858-535-6220. At Parker Law Firm, people matter. Hi, I'm Brad Parker. When I first got out of law school, I went to work for a big downtown Fort Worth law firm. It was a prestigious job, but I, I never felt fulfilled professionally helping banks and companies. I didn't have that fulfillment that kind of drove me to be a lawyer to begin with. And the more I saw and learned, uh, the more I realized that maybe being in the big firm wasn't the right thing for me. I went out on my own to start doing some personal injury work and what we call insurance bad faith uh, because you get the opportunity to help real people. Your efforts and your success makes a difference in their lives. And that is very satisfying and very rewarding to me. And it drives me every, every morning when I wake up to be able to help people. The rewarding times after a case is settled, the cards I get from clients, just to say, thank you, you made a difference in my life. I never really got that from the CEOs of the banks that I represented. It is truly rewarding to know that you've made a difference in someone's life and you've really helped them out. Principal Office, Bedford, Texas. Want to play golf with a legend? Tuesday, October 14th at the Nancy Lieberman Foundation Celebrity Golf Classic at Prestonwood Country Club in Plano. Join me and legendary golfer Annika Sorenstam. We're going to raise money for kids in the Metroplex. To play or sponsor, call 972-473-2121 or go to nancylliebermanfoundation.org. You're listening to 1160 AM, KVCE.
Welcome back to Believers in Business Bar Talk with Texas Board Certified Personal Injury Trial Lawyer, Brad Parker, right here on M1160 KVCE. Have questions? Get answers. Call in at 214-787-1160. That's 214-787-1160. You can check it out online at kvceradio.com. Brought to you by the Parker Law Firm. Welcome back to Bar Talk. I'm Brad Parker, the attorney you want but hope you never need. I was uh, uh, listening to the message there a minute ago from Nancy Lieberman about her golf tournament on October 14th. If you get an opportunity to do that, you really should come out and play. Uh, I'm going to be out there. I've been invited to go out there, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Nancy was in the studios earlier, and I didn't have a chance to meet her personally. Uh, I look forward to, to having that opportunity. I want to remind you, uh, tomorrow night at uh, 6.30, the Plano High School Wildcats football program will be on the air. So uh, be sure and tune in and listen to that. You know, Before we uh, went to break just a minute ago, I was kind of catching up on some stories that I had covered in the past, and I'll continue to follow and just kind of give some updates on them every now and then. Uh, one of the funnest that I think is going to be to uh, – to watch is this Jerry Jones lawsuit. Uh, if you noticed, uh, everything's been very quiet since uh, the original filing of the of the papers, and uh, there's a good reason for that. A gag order has been placed on uh, on the attorneys and the parties, and uh, uh, to, they can't visit with the press or comment or make any any comments or uh, press releases. Uh, or instruct anybody to to do it on their behalf. Um, you know, uh, this this case is pending in front of Dale Tillery, uh, a great judge over in Dallas County uh, for the 134th. Uh, he issued that order last week on the 11th. I guess that was last Thursday. But if you've been kind of following this thing from a from a, just a pure legal perspective, it's really an interesting case. Forget about the allegations. Forget about uh, who you like or who you don't like. Who, what you believe is legit, not legit. What's what's very interesting uh, from my point of view as a lawyer is how the process is working uh, in this case. The case was originally filed uh, last Monday night. Uh, you know, and if you've if you've been following this case, you know that there's pretty salacious uh, allegations being made against Jerry Jones. Uh, whether they're wrong or right, truth or accurate, time will only tell. Uh, but the the ma- fact of the matter is, uh, the lawsuit was filed, and they have an absolute right to file a lawsuit. Uh, you know, uh, everybody who ever files a lawsuit does not believe it's frivolous. I've never seen very many defendants who don't believe that any lawsuit filed against them is frivolous. Uh, they, they usually believe that the, that the lawsuit filed against them is frivolous. So. You know, it's kind of where you are in the process. But one of the things that the lawyers did for Jerry Jones immediately was to try and seal the court records and, in effect, prevent uh, the public and the press from knowing uh, what was filed, what was said in those documents that was filed with the court. And the next day, uh, and, and the judge did initially enter an order on the 9th, that'd be Tuesday, just hours, literally just hours after the lawsuit was filed. And then a hearing was held uh, last Wednesday to consider uh, some other some other issues along with whether or not it should be continued to be sealed. And uh, uh, to his great, great credit, in my opinion, uh, Judge Tillery uh, did the right thing. The only thing he could do, and that was reverse his earlier decision about sealing the, the court records. And uh, in doing so, I, I thought his, his, what he said was worthy of being repeated. And he, his comment was, I have deep faith and belief in open courts and the public's right to know and the press's right to report. I don't always agree with them, but the flip side is to allow certain interests to c- control what is seen, by whom, and when. That, that's pretty profound. I mean, as a lawyer and a, a student of the judiciary and the Seventh Amendment right, I mean, our courts are sanctuary, and they are, are dear to us. Uh, it is the ability of the most small person in the world 
to fight the biggest corporations and the largest money interests in the world. Uh, in the courtroom, everyone is on equal footing because you get an opportunity to allow a jury of 12 people who do not have any interest in the lawsuit, who are don't even know each other, uh, or it's very rare if they know each other, from all walks of life, all races, all ages, men, women, plumbers, electricians, lawyers, doctors, judges, homemakers, students. I mean, you get such a, a wonderful mix and one of the things that makes our courts so wonderful, not just the jury system and the ability to access it, but the right to, that it's open, that it's open to the public. And we don't have secret court hearings going on. And we don't have, you know, these, these uh, 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 I'm trying to think of the word from the old uh, English days when, you know, you would do things in secret, sit around and come out and announce what happened without the public having the right and the ability to know and hear all the evidence. Judge Tillery went on to say, I have a deep faith and belief in open courts and a public's right to know and the press's right to report. And, uh, you know, again, I don't care what side of this issue you're on. Just because Jerry Jones has a ton of money doesn't mean that he can squelch and prohibit this young woman's uh, allegations or the lawsuit from going forward and it being public, being tried in a public court, uh, just like our, our founders set up. Uh, you know, I understand that it may be very embarrassing and he doesn't like it, but how would you like it if he could quash it because he has that money and he could just come into the court and, and just, okay, it all goes away because I've got money. Now, that's not the way it's supposed to work. That's not the way it is working. And, uh, uh, you know, Judge Tillery doesn't need my uh, acknowledgement or approval, but man, I, I was really, really glad uh, to see him rule the way he did. Uh, it makes you proud to be a lawyer. It makes you proud to be part of the judicial system. Uh, so, but anyway, we'll see where, where all of this leads. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, an interesting ride. The next thing that's coming up in this uh, lawsuit is going to occur on uh, September the 26th. Uh, everybody was supposed to have their briefing in, I think it was today, uh, about uh, some motions to dismiss or motions for summary judgment. The uh, issues you may recall, we were talking about it a couple of weeks ago. The statute of limitations issues are, is a real issue uh, out there. Under the allegations made, you've got five years from the date of the offense in which to bring a civil case like it's been brought. This one was clearly brought longer than five days. They're basically raising two defenses that would justify the reason for the delay, one of which is that Jerry Jones was out of town. And the statutes provide that if you are out of town, or I'm sorry, not out of town, but out of state, if you as a defendant are out of state, that it tolls the running of the limitations. So in other words, if it's a five-year uh, statute of limitation, but you show that Jerry Jones was out of state for a total of uh, 72 days, well, then the statute of limitations becomes five years and 72 days. So that's what they're arguing about. Um, you know, the, one of the arguments, I think, is that, well, that only means if you're out on business, not pleasure, or uh, it doesn't apply to pleasure, but it does apply to, I mean, who knows what all the arguments are going to be, but uh, that's going to be a very interesting deal. I think from reading the docket sheet that the hearing that's scheduled on the 26th, uh, we'll, we'll get to that issue. Obviously, the Jerry Jones team would like this to be quashed uh, almost immediately, and the factual uh, evidence never, never delved into uh, that it, it just kind of go away. And he may be, be able to get there from a procedural standpoint. And uh, he's certainly entitled to try. And uh, hats off to him and his legal team for taking every opportunity to get there. And, uh, and again, obviously, uh, the attorney for Jana Weckerly, the young woman who's bringing this, this claim, uh, they'll be fighting it vigorously uh, in an attempt to, to bring the factual allegations to light and proceed with their cause of action. So, as I say, well, that'll be an interesting, interesting thing to take a look at and see. Uh, we got to go to break, but when we come back, I, I'd want to start talking about 
What happened in Aurora? As you may remember, the shooting, the mass shooting in the movie theater. If you haven't seen it, a lawsuit has been filed by the parents of one of the young women who was killed there, and they have sued an online gun ammunition uh, distributor. And so let's talk about that and some of the issues that are raised in the civil context on that. Uh, Come on back around, let's talk. I'm Brad Parker. You're listening to Bar Talk on AM 1160 KBCE. The Business Authority, 1160 AM KBCE. At Parker Law Firm, people matter. We have an unwavering commitment to people who have been seriously harmed by the negligence or wrongdoing of others. Our practice focuses on those who have been killed or seriously injured in major trucking or car accidents or whose lives have been seriously disrupted by the bad faith conduct of an insurance company. Hi, I'm Brad Parker, principal partner at Parker Law Firm. I'm board certified in personal injury trial law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. I'm also the immediate past president of the Texas Trial Lawyers Association. When you or a loved one has been seriously injured in an accident caused by another person's negligence, you may not know where to go or who to trust. Our firm is built on years of trial experience, a tradition of personal service, and a reputation for zealous representation of our clients. We're dedicated to providing experienced and comprehensive legal assistance to individuals and their families during their times of need. Let the attorneys from Parker Law Firm help you. Get a free consultation. Call 817-503-9200. ParkerLawFirm.com. Principal Office, Bedford, Texas. Well, it's time. The old car, well, it's on its last legs. Do the words honest, fair, upfront, good deal come to mind when deciding where to buy your next new car? Well, for most consumers, probably not. Well, if you haven't already, it's time to head over to meet the folks at the Thompson Group at Classic Chevrolet. Whether it's a new car, truck, or SUV, commercial needs, or handicap, the Thompson Group at Classic Chevrolet is your one-stop Chevy dealer. Call Ken Thompson at 817-410-1560. That's 817-410-1560. Or online 24-7 at ClassicFleet.com. Remember, anyone can sell your car, but the Thompson Group at Classic Chevrolet assists you in your automotive needs. Call 817-410-1560. That's 817-410-1560. Or visit them online at ClassicFleet.com. It's the Thompson Group at Classic Chevrolet, your business elite dealer. Hi, this is Phil Grandy. In order to succeed in investing in the markets, you have to grasp all the elements. When it comes to good health, we commission Nobel Prize nominee, author, and creator, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, Dr. Joe Wallach, to guide us to the necessary elements of healthy and vitality. After 17,000 autopsies, the doctor has concluded that the human body needs 90, yes, 90 essential elements, and a shortage of any can lead to over 900 diseases. We have taken Dr. Wallace's lead and set up a website, philsganghealth.com. That's philsganghealth.com, offering the most impactful health supplement products money can buy. Wallet's simple, healthy body system will deliver all 90 essential ingredients in micro form your body can use. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to philsganghealth.com and get started on your healthy body challenge today. Again, philsganghealth.com. Ow! Stupid bugs! If pests are pestering you this summer, give Alley Cat Pest Control a call. A top performer in the pest control industry for over 25 years, offering the most comprehensive pest control services to the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex and surrounding counties. Alley Cat Pest Control is dedicated to providing a wide array of quality eradication services to apartment complexes, manufacturing facilities, food industry facilities, churches, and residential properties. Our technicians are trained specialists, providing our clients with timely, effective pest control services. From term and bug detection and eradication, including removal of spiders, wasps, bees, ants, roaches, and even vermin. There's no pest too big or too small for Alley Cat Pest Control. Protect your investment and don't let termites destroy your home. Don't let bed bugs ruin a good night's sleep. Give us a call today, 817-469-4849. That's 817-469-4849. Or visit alleycatpestandtermite.com. From Wall Street to the Metroplex, this is 1160 AM KVCE. 
Welcome back to Bar Talk with Brad Parker. You can check it out online at kbcradio.com. Brought to you by the Parker Law Firm. Have questions? Get answers. Call in at 214-787-1160. That's 214-787-1160. What'd you say? I won't pay. Rather play. It's my freedom. Living in the USA. Welcome back. I'm glad you're hanging out with me this afternoon. Uh, I, just hope, I don't know if it's raining, but when I was driving in this afternoon, it looked like rain was everywhere. And uh, good, we can use some. And maybe it'll cool things off. It got hot and humid all of a sudden again. Uh, I don't know. Listen, call in if you got any questions that you want answered or, or anything I can maybe help you with. If you've got the questions, I uh, hope I've got the answers. And if I can't get you the answer, I'm going to find you somebody that can. Uh our number here is 214-787-1160. That's 214-787-1160. And if you're driving and don't and you want to be responsible and not call in while you're driving, call me at my office. Uh, it's Parker Law Firm. You can Google that. Uh, it's parkerlawfirm.com. You can email me at brad at parkerlawfirm.com or call me if you can remember this number, 817-503-503. Five zero three. That's 817-503-9200, 503-9200. So give me a call if you get a chance, and uh, I'll give you a free consultation. And, if, again, if I cannot help you, I will do my darndest to find somebody who can. And a lot of times, you know, I, I find that people don't really need a lawyer. They may have a legal question, but once they get that legal question answered, they're, they're on their way. They, they know what they need to do then. And so uh, oftentimes I can, I can help folks just by answering a simple question. Other times it takes litigation. Other times it may take a letter. But uh, whatever it is, uh, I just want to try to help you if I can. And so please don't hesitate to call me. Well, the, all the news shows, uh, and if you haven't seen it, uh, you're living in a cave. Uh, but uh, as you may remember, uh, back about two years ago, I think it was in July of 2012, uh, there was a mass shooting in Aurora, Colorado at the movie theater. And uh, at that movie theater, several young people uh, were killed. I think there were a total of 12 deaths and several serious injuries. Uh, that's when uh, a young man by the name of Holmes uh, entered the theater wearing full head-to-toe body, uh, body armor. Uh, he had uh, thousands of rounds of uh, ammunition with him uh, and he just opened fire one of the things he had was a is a 100 round magazine uh, so he went into the movie theater and just started unloading and uh, had it not been for the fact that, that the uh, magazine jammed I'm sure we would have had a, a lot more deaths uh, no question about it but a little backdrop to this story is you may recall uh, back during the President Bush's administration in 2005, there was a, a law passed called Protection of Lawful Co Commerce and Arms Act uh, by Congress. And in essence, what this law did was immunize gun and ammunition manufacturers from any civil liability resulting from uh, a death. Uh, in other words, what the goal was was to prevent anyone uh, from suing uh, an armed gun manufacturer, for instance, if somebody got that gun and killed somebody else. And, you know, and, and frankly, I can understand that to some degree. Uh, you, 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 you can't sue GM just because someone buys their car and then runs into somebody and kills them. There are exceptions if GM did something stupid, uh, like a, an ignition that froze the car up uh, and that caused them to run into somebody and kill them, or the gas tank exploded, uh, that might be a reason that you can sue them. There, there are exceptions to that, and there should be. You should not ever allow one segment of industry or manufacturing have complete and utter, utter immunity from liability no matter their conduct. And uh, in essence, I would suggest to you that's what we've allowed in this state under tort reform for, for hospitals. Uh, and I go back to the Dunch story that we were talking about earlier. They let a cocaine addict operate on people. They knew he was a cocaine addict, and yet they still let him operate on people and even give him a, a 
somewhat of a good review when he's walking out the door when they know darn good and well that's not the case. Um, same with gun and ammunition manufacturers. And, and listen, I, I am a constitutionalist. I believe in the Seventh Amendment just as much as I do the First, Second, Tenth. You know, I, I believe in the right to bear arms. But if a gun manufacturer or an ammunition manufacturer does something really totally stupid, should we not hold them responsible? And in this particular case, uh, this is a, a case of first impression. Uh, the parents of this young woman have filed suit against an online ammunition uh, a distributor, uh, alleging that they should have done more in screening who they were selling this stuff to. It, actually, they have filed suit against uh, four different online providers of ammunition, and the lawsuit uh, indicates that at least 4,300 rounds of ammunition were sold to this young man, Holmes, uh, by one company. 700 rounds and a 100-round magazine was sold by another company. And the question really becomes, at what point do these companies have an obligation to figure out who they're selling to? I mean, we do the same thing with alcohol. We hold bar owners responsible for allowing someone to come into their bar and get just totally plastered and then get back on the road. If a bar owner does that, they are responsible for when that person goes out and runs someone else over, killing them or seriously injuring them. Why should we not hold uh, uh, ammunition manufacturers the same when someone buys obscene amounts of ammunition and they, they don't have any kind of screening no kind of, uh, uh, you know, why are you buying so much? At, at what point do we say enough's enough? I'm not advocating in any shape, form, or fashion uh, the pro- prohibition of selling ammunition online or, or guns uh, uh, through, through the appropriate dealerships and, and, and whatnot. But at some point, if some guy comes up to you, uh, uh, looked crazy in his head talking, babbling to Martians and wearing an aluminum foil hat and wants to buy an AK-47 and 1,300 rounds of ammunition, do you have some responsibility to say no? Well, I would argue that this, this, this con- congressional legislation that got passed in 2005 would say, yes, you're completely immune. Sell to whoever you want, however crazy they may be. You've got no responsibilities. So that's going to be very interesting to see where this case goes, because they're trying to, to declare that, A, the act is not applicable, and B, it's unconstitutional uh, uh, to, to, to enforce it so widespread. And in part, it's based, I mean, while this is a brand new suit and it's not against a manufacturer of the ammunition or the firearm, it's only against the online distributor of the ammunition, it, it is an interesting twist, and it's going to be worth watching. But this kind of uh, takes a little bit further a case out of Alaska. Uh, it's called Kim versus Cox. And in that case, uh, uh, Mr. Cox, who apparently was on a register that he could not, he was prohibited from buying firearms, uh, and he was apparently because of some drug-related offenses. Uh, he was a meth head, meth addict. Uh, goes to a gun sh- a gun dealer, buys a gun, and then uh, saws off the barrel and then promptly kills Mr. Kim. Uh, I don't know much of the other underlying facts other than from a legal standpoint. Of course, the perpetrator's in prison for 99 years, but uh, the Kim family sued uh, the, the seller of the gun, uh, claiming they were negligent. They should have never sold this gun to a guy who was clearly apparently on the roll somehow of not being able to purchase the gun. And so uh, that case was dismissed by the court as being in violation of both the federal legislation and some state court legis- or state legislation uh, prohibiting that. And the Alaska Supreme Court recently heard that case and reversed the trial court. And so now uh, this case is going to go forward in Alaska and uh, a determination by a jury. It'll be interesting to, to watch where that is. But, I, you know, so often I see the debate being, 
uh, no, you're trying to take my guns and ammunition away versus, you know, if this were alcohol in a bar setting, uh, you know, and you're trying to hold the bar responsible for, for, you know, getting a guy three sheets to the wind and then allowing him to go out and get in a car. Uh, that's not about taking alcohol away. That's about being a responsible citizen. And uh, I would submit to you that uh, a lot of these lawsuits aren't about guns take, being taken away at all. It's, a, it's about being responsible. And at what point as a society do we want to impose liability for just careless and negligent and, and, and oftentimes grossly negligent conduct? So I don't know. That's going to be a debate, and it's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, we'll kind of follow that and bring you updates as they know. Got a break right now. You've been listening to Bar Talk. I'm Brad Parker. It's AM 1160 KVCE. Come back. We're going to talk about some more things. Thanks. 1160 AM KVCE, Dallas Fort Worth's business authority. Hello, everybody. From Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana. It's Notre Dame football. Today, the number one game in the nation. Notre Dame football is back. Sacked by a great Notre Dame defense. Intercepted again. Finding a way. Breaks into open field. 35 to 30. the 10. He's heading to the goal line. Four, eight, touchdown, Notre Dame. The Irish return to reclaim college football's crown. <laughs> Listen all season long on your home for Notre Dame football. Right here on AM 1160. See a full season schedule at kbceradio.com slash sports. Tune in Thursday evenings 5 to 6 as KBCE's Believers in Business presents the Family Law Hour with attorneys Frank Skipper and Donna Smith discussing divorce, child support, custody, mediation, adoption, and all other areas of family law. Both Frank and Donna focus their practices exclusively on family law. That's the Family Law Hour, tomorrow at 5, right here on AM 1160 KVCE and online at kvceradio.com. Brought to you by the David Wynn Law Firm and the law offices of Donna J. Smith. At Parker Law Firm, people matter. We have an unwavering commitment to people who have been seriously harmed by the negligence or wrongdoing of others. Our practice focuses on those who have been killed or seriously injured in major trucking or car accidents or whose lives have been seriously disrupted by the bad faith conduct of an insurance company. Hi, I'm Brad Parker, Principal Partner at Parker Law Firm. I'm board certified in personal injury trial law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. I'm also the immediate past president of the Texas Trial Lawyers Association. When you or a loved one has been seriously injured in an accident caused by another person's negligence, you may not know where to go or who to trust. Our firm is built on years of trial experience, our tradition of personal service, and a reputation for zealous representation of our clients. We're dedicated to providing experienced and comprehensive legal assistance to individuals and their families during their times of need. Let the attorneys from Parker Law Firm help you. Get a free consultation. Call 817-503-9200. ParkerLawFirm.com. Principal Office, Bedford, Texas. Celebrities and models all over the world are tossing their old razors and expensive waxing and laser treatments and switching to No-No Pro. No No Pro provides weeks of long lasting professional hair removal for smooth skin all over. This revolutionary device is the best way to remove unwanted hair painlessly. That means no nicks, cuts, or razor burn. No pain. Whether it's your legs, arms, bikini line, face, wherever, you will love how easy this is to use and the results you get. Ditch the razors and appointment only treatments and make the switch to No No Pro. You'll be thrilled. Best of all, No No Pro comes with a 100% money back guarantee. Plus, when you order, No No is giving you a $50 gift card to a dermatologist recommended and award winning skincare line and a free travel case. This offer is only available online. Go to startnono.com. That's startnono.com. S T A R T nono.com. Startnono.com. At Parker Law Firm, people matter. Hi, I'm Brad Parker. When I first got out of law school, I went to work for a big downtown Fort Worth law firm. It was a prestigious job, but I, I never felt fulfilled professionally helping banks and companies. I didn't have that fulfillment that kind of drove me to be a lawyer to begin with. And the more I saw and learned, uh, the more I realized that maybe being in the big firm wasn't the right thing for me. I went out on my own to start doing some personal injury work and what we call insurance bad faith uh, because you get the opportunity to help real people. Your efforts and your success makes a difference in their lives. And that is very satisfying and very rewarding to me. And it drives me every, every morning when I wake up to be able to help people. The rewarding times after a case is settled, the cards I get from clients, just to say, thank you, you made a difference in my life. I never really got that from the CEOs of the banks that I represented. 
It is truly rewarding to know that you've made a difference in someone's life and you've really helped them out. Principal Office, Bedford, Texas. EFW's Business Authority, 1160 AM, KVCE. Welcome back to Believers in Business Bar Talk with Texas Board Certified Personal Injury Trial Lawyer, Brad Parker, right here on M1160 KVCE. Have questions? Get answers. Call in at 214-787-1160. That's 214-787-1160. You can check it out online at kvceradio.com. Brought to you by the Parker Law Firm. Welcome back. You're listening to Bar Talk, and I'm Brad Parker, the attorney you want but hope you never need. Call it if you got any questions. This is our last segment, and I uh, wanted to visit with you about a few few more things. But if you have a question that you need an answer to, don't hesitate to call in, uh, 214-787-1160. Or if you're driving and you want to contact me tomorrow, uh, please give me a call anytime, uh, 817-503-9200. That's 817-503-9200. Or, of course, you can always email me, brad at parkerlawfirm.com be happy to answer any question you might have and if i can't answer it i'm going to try my best to find somebody that can all for for no charge uh, a couple of things i want to uh, bring up I, you know in this day and age of uh, social media you're seeing more and more situations where people feel like they've been defamed that somehow uh, someone's been viciously uh, pursuing rumors against them or have uh, impugned their integrity. Uh, and, you know, what can you do about that? Uh, you know, that's always been, well, it's money damages. and uh, But a lot of times, you know, especially now the day of social media, it's not a matter of uh, uh, getting up in front of a crowd and saying something or something in a newspaper about you and then, then it goes away. Uh, you know, it, once it's on the Internet, uh, it's there forever. Uh, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> they say you can take it down and erase it, but it's really it's very difficult to do. And uh, so, you know, what what can be done about that? And, and can you prevent someone from reposting uh, so that it gets further and further out? You know, the um, the uh, S- Supreme Court for the state of Texas recently ruled on this issue. And the the real issue in this case that, that came down was whether or not you could prohibit them from ever reposting the content that was found to be defamatory. In other words, we now know that what you said about me is defamatory, and I want an injunction to keep you from ever posting anything about that again on the Internet. And so this was what the, the, the court was wrestling with. And our, our very own local uh, justice, Deborah Larriman, uh, who is a fantastic addition to that court, uh, wrote the opinion for the court and uh, basically said, no, an injunction is not appropriate when you uh, uh, try to remedy some sort, when you try to, to fix a remedy to this situation. In other words, the courts can order the, the person to take down what they've said, and I question how well you can take it down, but they can ask to order them to take it down, but you cannot order them not to post it in the future. And frankly, this is following a long tradition of libel and slander uh, uh, jurisprudence in this country that basically says we can't have prior restraint And that's why we allow the defamation suits to go forward, because we have an absolute right to free speech. And the government can't prohibit you from your right to free speech uh, before you say it. Uh, They can certainly come in and do something once you say it. And as a civil litigant, I can do something once you say it. But I can't say or get an order saying you cannot say it. I hope that makes sense. It's probably a little confusing. But in other words, if if I want to say something nasty about uh, uh, someone, John Doe, uh, I can do that. But I have to face the, the repercussions from that. I can be sued for damages. I can be ordered to take it down from the social media. Uh, you know, and, and I 
may have to pay damages to the to John Doe for saying it. But what John Doe can't do is get an order from the court saying that I can never say that again about him because it would then impede on my rights to free speech. If I say it again, I may be subject to the repercussions all over again. But what the court recognizes and what everyone uh, does, if you study these cases, is that things may have changed. Uh, maybe since the last time I said that about John Doe, it really has become true. <laughs> or or maybe I'm an idiot and I just need to get sanctioned or, or, or uh, sued again. Uh, or th- so many different things can change. So uh, it's kind of an interesting, if you're a law nerd like me, it's an interesting thing to look at, especially with as much... Um, of this that we have going on in the internet uh, these days. One of the other things I I wanted to talk to you about real quick is that uh, if you've had a metal hip, metal on metal hip implant, uh, these cases that are going on in Dallas right now might interest you. Uh, As you may or may not know, uh, the company Johnson Johnson who bought Depew, Depew Orthopedics, Depew created a hip implant along with many other manufacturers uh, that was basically a metal-on-metal hip. And uh, they promoted these and and really got the doctors excited about them for the use in younger people, people still in their 40s, 50s, or even early 60s, because the life of the hip uh, was supposed to be so much longer and the durability of that hip replacement was supposed to be so much longer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, these things were rushed to market without appropriate testing. And uh, ultimately, what was determined was that the metal rubbing on the metal caused these mi- microscopic or very, very small uh, metal filings and shavings to fall off into the tissue around that implant and cause cobalt and chromium poisoning. And the ultimately, you, you would see levels that would... Uh, For instance, the case that's pending and that's actually being tried in Dallas right now, uh, the lady had 85 times the normal finding of cobalt and chromium. And what this does is it kills the tissue around the implant as well as may cause blood poisoning. And and there's some, some studies that would suggest that maybe it causes cancer. And so... These hips were having to be removed at an uh, alarmingly high rate. Our, our uh, internal statistics show uh, that uh, basically about 45 to 50 percent of the patients that, that we represent have to have a hip implant within five to seven years where these things were contemplated to last uh, anywhere from 15 to 20. So a huge, huge problem. The case is pending. The, the, there are thousands of these cases pending across the country. Uh, most of them have been consolidated in what we call MDLs or multi-district litigation. And as a result, uh, they will be tried uh, one by one. But what usually happens is that only a handful get tried so that you can see what a jury's going to do with this and what all the legal issues are. And then the two sides can come together and try to make a decision what a reasonable settlement might be to resolve uh, the cases. Uh, the case is being tried in this particular instance on behalf of the plaintiffs for Mark by Mark Lanier, who is a former classmate of mine and just a, a fantastic attorney. Uh, he's out of Houston. Uh, Mark has been extremely successful over his career in these kinds of mass tort cases. He uh, recently, most recently, tried the Actos case. That was the diabetic drug that caused uh, kidney cancer. Uh, that he got a nine billion. That's billion with a B uh, out of uh, Louisiana. Those cases quickly settled after that, and uh, so he's trying this first pinnacle case pending in federal court in Dallas in front of Judge Kincaid. There's another trial to follow on November third, and another one on January twelfth. So. Those will be some good cases to watch and uh, uh, see how they turn out. Got uh, one more quick issue that I want to talk to you about, and that's power of attorneys. Just as we leave, I'm running out of time, but I had a dear friend ask me about power of attorneys for her parents. Uh, I'll come back and talk about a little bit more of that and estate planning on a future show. But just know this, that just because you have a power of attorney doesn't necessarily mean the banks or financial institutions or, or anybody, for that matter, has to recognize it. 
It gives you that power, but it's not a power that's absolute. It does not have to be recognized. If you have to get a power of attorney for your parents or a loved one, be sure to go to the financial institutions that they're involved in uh, and ask them, do you recognize this? Will you recognize this? Do you have your own power of attorney form that you would prefer us to use? Uh, find out what, what their criteria is so that if you ever have to use that, uh, you, you will be prepared and, and can do so, and it will be recognized by the financial institution. The last thing you want to have happen is them not recognize it and you not being able to exercise the power that your loved ones hope to give you. Well, I've run out of time. I want to thank Dan for stepping in for Matt this afternoon, keeping me on time. Uh, coming up next, we have the Bloomberg News Hour. And, of course, tomorrow night from 5 to 6, you have Family Law Hour with Frank and Donna. So be sure and turn in to that, tune in to that if you want to uh, find out any family law questions. And, of course, the Plano uh, Wildcat football game follows at 6.30 from what I understand. So until next week, this has been Bar Talk. I'm Brad Parker. You're listening to us on AM 1160 KVCE. See you next week. Thanks for joining us for Bar Talk with local trial lawyer Brad Parker, the attorney you want but hope you never need. Join us again next week when you, the listener, can become more educated about your legal rights and your Seventh Amendment right to a civil justice system. Until then, if you are in need of legal advice or services, contact local attorney Brad Parker at 817-503-9200 or on his website at parkerlawfirm.com.